take a look at what we have going on. Here we have a probe set up on the liquid side. I know it's the liquid side because it's coming out of my liquid receiver to my king valve. So we have this valve mid-seated and it's giving us our liquid or high side pressure. From here I can look on the app and see what's going on. So it's giving me my pressure of 234.1 PSI gauge. It's R22, so it converts to a saturated temperature of 112.5, so that's great. We follow our liquid line over. We see our liquid line filter dryer. We have our sight glass. We want to make sure we have a solid column of liquid. And then we have our actual liquid line temperature with this clamp over here. So with that clamp, I can tell you that my liquid line temperature is at 107.9. So it's good my liquid line temperature. Now what's cool about this is it's also calculating for us our subcooling. Our subcooling is showing me at 4.7. I'm not worried about subcooling at all because I have a liquid receiver. So we can check to make sure that receiver is not over full, but all we really need is a solid amount of liquid, and we know that because of our sight glass. If you look on the suction side, here's my suction port. I got another valve that's open and closed valve. It's very similar to a King valve, but it has a different name. So here I have my suction side hooked up, and you see the suction side here on our app. So our suction pressure is 51.4. R22 automatically converts it to a saturated temperature of 27.1. Now, if this was air conditioning, that would be a concern. It's below 32. Because this is a walk-in cooler, that's normal. It will freeze up, but it'll also defrost itself during the uh, off cycle if the fans stay on. So we'll get into that later. So if we continue to look at this, let's see what else the numbers we have. On our suction line, we have a thermometer here on our actual suction line. So if we look at it, our thermometer, our suction line is at 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So now if I know the actual suction line temperature and my suction saturated temperature, I also know my superheat. So this is a TXV and my superheat's at 8.7. Also, you can see it back on my information page, I've set this unit for a TXV, thermostatic expansion valve. We can also look if we suck into the compressor, low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. We come out of the compressor is a high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor. So this is my discharge line, also called my hot gas line. High temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. So our system also gives us that number as well. It's telling us our discharge line temperature is 185.2. So we're under 225, so we know we're not having oil breakdown. And this app is also using that to make sure that our number doesn't get too high. Now we've also talked before about some other numbers. Another one we haven't talked about yet is called the approach temperature, which is also a very important number. We'll get to that later. As soon as our outdoor temperature is within range, our compression ratio, this isn't accurate because I haven't entered the correct compressor. I need to use the Copeland app to put the correct amount of uh, compressor size in there. Uh, if we continue over, under system information, I've set the system up. I just picked a number, so being a split system. I set it up for two tons. I, I need to get the actual number of that compressor. Refrigerant R22, but that it is for a beverage cooler, even though it is a walk-in, it's cooling a beverage. Target temperature, we want our case to be at 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, here I have no head pressure control in this one because it's in a conditioned area. My CTOA, which is condensing temperature over ambient, is 25 degrees. This is also called condenser TD, the, differ the temperature difference between the refrigerant condensing and the air entering the condenser. And that number is important because here you can see I have another port right here. This is giving me the temperature of the air coming into the unit. So between the temperature of air coming into the unit and my saturated temperature, it's able to calculate the TD, or the condensing temperature over ambient. My meter device, I have it set for a TXV. Super 8, I have it set for 12. My subcooling was put 2 because we're not concerned about subcooling at all. So let's submit. Now if I go back to my outdoor unit, And we see approach temperature. This is important because now we're using our outdoor temperature. So it's using the outdoor temperature and it's also using the line temperature to calculate our approach method. And we also have, so we're also able to use that condensing temperature over ambient, also called condenser TD, to find out if we're in range here by the, on the pressure side. So actually we're showing that we're just within range here in the green mark. I know that my box temperature is set for 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's showing here that our temperature is a little bit high for what it wants with that box. And as that temperature cools down, it'll be in range for us. So all this information we learned is putting it into the app and calculating this stuff for us. It's making the job a lot easier. 
So we have our temperature of the air coming outside, our discharge line temperature, our liquid pressure side. We also have here our suction pressure side, actual suction line temperature, and the actual liquid line temperature. We also have some very important numbers inside you get as well. So here we have our thermostatic expansion belt in our indoor unit. This is an adjustable thermostatic expansion belt, but then because my super heat's not where I want it yet, we're adjusting it to get it where we want. And don't be adjusting these until we're ready for that until you're fully really confident. A lot of people adjust them when they don't need to be, but we're having to adjust this one. So it's getting our, this is the power head with the transmission tube. So it's monitoring here the actual suction line temperature. And then we have also the side port coming over here to the suction manifolds. And this is giving us our suction pressure that's converting into a spring pressure saturated temperature. So it's monitoring super heat for us, but it'll adjust it so it's setting it at what we want it to be at. On the back side of this coil here, we have an instrument reading our return air wet bulb temperature and also reads return air dry bulb. So the temperature of the air coming into this coil. It's also giving me the temperature of the air coming in the box essentially. And on the opposite side, I have another one of these sensors reading the temperature of the air coming out of the unit. This is reading dry bulb and also wet bulb temperature, but the app is going to be using this to calculate how much B2 and heat we're moving across the span. So this is the better version for the refrigeration side, but they have it pretty well dialed in for the residential side. So this is our basic walk-in box, and all it's doing is cooling a beverage, which in this case the beverage of choice is an adult beverage. So here we have a sensing bulb. This sensing bulb goes through a little transmission tube that's going outside the box to our thermostat. Here we have another sensing bulb that goes right through the casing of this door. As we open the door and go to the outside, this is giving us the temperature inside of our box. Here we have the thermostat for our walk-in box. So we have the thermostat where we want it set at. Here it is in Fahrenheit and then the bottom one over here at Celsius. So we want it above freezing. So if we set it below 35, there's a good chance that this will freeze up. So we want it above freezing. And this is our solenoid valve that we talked about in another video. It's also called a liquid line solenoid valve. Here's where our drain line comes out of the unit. In this case, drains right into a bucket. <laughs> 